So I'll kick it off. Uh, how many of you know what blockchain is? I'm a strong idea. That's great. So if you raise your hand, I'm going to ask you questions, so be prepared for that. So our presentation will be more practical. This is a sum total of at least our collective work together. I am Nitin Gaur. I started the director of Digital Asset Labs at IBM, founded Blockchain Labs at IBM. So I've been doing this since 2013. So the gray hair that I have is because of blockchain. Uh, and so collectively, this is inspiration of real world use cases. So we've spent a lot of time experimenting. We've spent a lot of time working with clients. I personally, me and my global team, have had about 40 plus different client engagements. And very uh, you know, small percentage of that has translated into moving from a POC production phase. So this is sort of a sum total of learning, but with the healthcare only because it's a healthcare conference, sum total of that experience tying that into our healthcare space. So Francisco, I'll let him introduce himself. Francisco, yeah. Francisco, Cur Francisco Curvera. Um, <clears throat> I'm uh, director of development for healthcare solutions based on blockchain. <coughs> We're looking also at solutions and platforms uh, extensions needed to support healthcare on the on the blockchain uh, platform. Right. So he's a healthcare guy, I'm a technical <coughs> guy, and I think um, Mr. Gupta, or the, the MIT professor, is just right that we have to work together. So we try to bring that acumen together where we bring our technology teams, we bring the industry teams, we bring the folks who have the knowledge of the industry and bring it together to form a solution. So we're going to discuss the solution in quite detail in terms of what we as a company have done over time. But there are a few things that I do want to talk about. Work on cryptocurrency and crypto assets and blockchain. This one slide, thank you. There's one slide I would like you to take from this presentation. This is this slide. I think oftentimes, and the reason why I formed IBM Digital Asset Labs is because the majority of the work that we were doing were around data, and we were trying to solve data problems. And I had to then take a step back after almost three and a half years worth of work and look into solving the issue of that you have to have the notion of digital asset if you're dealing with blockchain. So what does blockchain do for us? If I distill down all the work that we've done, it's two things. We are trying to solve for time and trust. And I think it will manifest itself in many of the examples that we're going to give you today in terms of our work. But the idea there is that time has these two constructs have enormous implication in regulation, has enormous implication in terms of the cost to the industry because you know you have many parties involved. Each party have their own business process. Whether you look at claims processing or even clinical trial, for example, you have all these intermediaries who are processing some information, some data. Couple that with industry-specified regulation and you have an entire gamut of nightmare and cost that goes with it. Right, so time and trust are, is something that blockchain aims to solve which leads to using technology. So blockchain as a technology itself is not, is, it's interesting to people like us who are in technology, but by itself it doesn't do a whole lot, right? So it manifests itself in some of these sort of model where it's truly a trusted digital transaction platform. It's a platform for co-creation. You know, co it's a platform for multi-party trust networks, disintermediation networks, and so on and so forth. But if you were to take the use cases that is manifested out of blockchain as a technology elements, you'll realize that all imply that you have multiple parties working together, right? In many cases, we'll talk about ecosystem, we talk about minimum viable ecosystem, we talk about networks, we talk about having a set of parties that are needed for the networks to sort of form, and eventually the network grows itself, and that's the thesis, and that's the hope of these blockchain promise to be delivered. So in many cases, you'll find that these ecosystems are very specific to our industry, and especially in cases of regulated industries, we will talk about the problems that it ensues, elements such as data sharing, which of course, you know, it's a big problem in a regulated industry like healthcare, financial services, talking about maintaining privacy, talking about identity. So all these things manifest themselves to be a technical challenge, but the promise of blockchain network itself is immense in terms of solving a collective network-based problem. So I'll take a pause here give it back to Paco, or Francisco. He will talk about some of the industry imperatives, and then he'll give it back to me in terms of how it's done. So I'm not just going to talk about the future and, and possibilities. I'll give you an example of what we have done <coughs> to achieve some of these uh, theories. All right. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you. Uh, going forward. So why blockchain for healthcare? Um, if you look at the surveys that have been done over the last few years, across uh, different type of different industries 
top executives to try to assess the value, anticipate the value that blockchain technology can bring to the industry. You see at the top, reliably, financial services, of course. Number two is healthcare. And there's a reason for that, right? Healthcare, as Nitin was, was saying, uh, in many industries you have processes. They involve multiple parties. Healthcare is particularly fragmented. It's a very complex ecosystem. You see multiple parties, even in the simplest transactions, you have many parties from the payers, the providers, manufacturers, patient organizations. And this, these organizations work together, so they're business partners. There's also a somewhat adversarial relationship in, among many of them, for many reasons, right? And that's the situation in which you have an opportunity to simplify the business process, share data, and create a layer of trust that's going to make things that today are very complex, cumbersome, faster, easier, more effective, and eventually enable transformation of the industry. So that's the expectation, and you probably heard that there's, there's a lot of if you follow a little bit the blockchain for healthcare saga, there's almost consensus that there are many use cases, many situations, many processes that we run today that could be dramatically simplified and improved with, with blockchain, and that could lead to fundamental change, right? These are some of the ones that people, uh, people have been mentioning. There, there are several others. Many of them have a common underlying issue of what's the data that we share, how we share transactions, right? Uh, let me just mention, for example, the question of uh, healthcare data sharing. We've been hearing about this this morning, right? The ability of having a trusted repository where consent, provenance, chain of custody of all healthcare information is provided can be, will be transformational, right? We can lead us to integrated health records, data going efficiently where it should be used, it's going to be more effective. Um, provider onboarding, I mean, some of you, if you come from the uh, from plans, health plans, provided data is a big pain point, the lack of quality, the distributed responsibility of updating, the lack of incentives to do this. Perfect use case, again, for blockchain, for delivering incentives, managing um, quality of the information, sharing quality information, right? I'm gonna be talking about this, the, the one on the top left, the, the alternative payment models, as a one example. It's one in which we've done a lot of work. And it's a situation which both you see almost the low-hanging fruit, in, so immediate value that blockchain can bring, and also the, its ability to drive transformation in the industry, right? So let me just talk briefly about one of these alternative payment models, bundle payments, right? You may be familiar with this. It's a program that's been pushed from the government since a few years ago. Commercial insurance is trying to get onto this, and the idea is set a fixed price for a type of, of a care episode, right? and make essentially shift responsibility towards the providers to deliver quality care as a, at a fixed point. And there's rewards if they come below, they can share the savings, they, 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 they also share the risk, right? So and the interesting thing is that it is a very simple program from that point of view. It's hard to manage from many different uh, perspectives. Among them, because there are many parties involved. There's a payer, there's a typically a convener or a coordinator entity, multiple providers involved, and they all have a risk and a, a, a opportunity also to share the savings, right? So one of the problems we've seen, this program had been in, in, out there for a, a few years already. And some of the problems that we hear about is that, first of all, these institutions have problem managing their risk. For that, they need visibility and data they can trust that given an accurate perspective of where they are, what are they up to? Are they gonna lose money, make money? Are they managing the patients correctly, right? There's a question of trust, for example. How we settle these contracts? So the payer will tell you, this is what you owe me. The provider say, no, this is what I owe you. We hire an auditor. You know, there's, there's a question of distributed responsibility and not single, cent single point of trust, right? And this makes us expensive, slow, inefficient. So the whole set of issues, right, related to transparency and trust mostly, which is why it makes this very, very appropriate for a blockchain solution. This is what we're, how we approach in this. And um, this, by the way, is an initiative that uh, we're jointly uh, building this, the solution like this with, uh, between IBM and PNC Bank. And the idea is use the blockchain as a central uh, repository of trusted information and business logic. Right? So essentially, all services are rendered to any patient under one of these contracts are reflected and validated into the ledger, right? So that everybody agrees what services 
that are relevant has been provided, what has been paid, and then at the end of the cycle, we can do a reconciliation based on a set of business rules, smart contracts that everybody agrees upon, they're trusted, and this allows us to do essentially immediate uh, real-time reconciliation of those, these contracts. As opposed to today where we know that these care episodes take six to 18 months to settle, right? So just from the timing point of view, this is a huge gain for everybody. What makes this possible? The trust. The fact that all parties trust the data, trust, parties trust the, the rules that are gonna be used to settle the contracts, right? And what do we get? In a typical situation, for example, a knee replacement is a very typical uh, episode of care covered by these contracts. So you have preoperative uh, care. There's the inpatient, the surgical, the stay in the hospital, and then the post-discharge, post-acute, or rehab, etc. Multiple parties involved, different institutions, right? Today, what we see, manual reconciliation of the, of the, of the, <clears throat> of the, uh, uh, the episodes. And this is because, not just because of lack of automation, but it's because of lack of trust, as I was saying before, right? By, by moving to an automated trusted reconciliation, we can do real time reconciliation and payment. There's single view of where things are, all the information that is relevant, all the care has been provided, and we know have full provenance of where that information comes and how it has been validated. So everybody knows that what they're looking at is the real picture that is gonna matter when the contract is executed, right? All, this, all the decisions, care decisions, payment decisions, contract settlement are recorded, tracked, full provenance, full transparency for all the, all the parties. And this is essentially a summary of the, the value we get by applying blockchain a, a situation like this. The real impact on the industry is that instruments like these that are very valuable, in which everybody can gain, patients, provider, payers, can become much easier to adopt because you lower all these barriers that make today these programs expensive, slow, somewhat undesirable for providers and others, right? You just make value-based care uh, something that is affordable and can be deployed in an effective manner, right? So this was the example I wanted to highlight. As I said before, there's lots of use cases in healthcare, and this is one that shows very well the opportunities of applying blockchain here. Nitin. I have a question for you all uh, in the spirit of keeping the, the participation. So if you look at the healthcare, right, when, we, when I got involved about four and a half, five years back, we were discussing EMR, EHR, which is really hard use cases to touch yep. for obvious reasons, right? Complex ecosystems. Uh, the focus suddenly shifted from healthcare information to healthcare delivery. And there are two different things that the industry is grappling with and the cost. So we went back and looked into the original intent of ACA or AKA Obamacare, which is all about healthcare information sharing, leading to solving some of the core industry problems around cost and, and healthcare delivery. But the question you should be asking is to us is, you know, we dealt with this. We we had N number of workshops, we had a bunch of POCs with the various ecosystem players. We settled on this pay or pay network. Why? Does anybody want to guess? Yeah, so yeah. Does anybody want to guess why we chose this? And I'm just making a guess because I, I disengaged out of some time because I was focusing on financial <laughs> services, but I, I, I have an idea, I think, why we focused on this. So this notion of going back to healthcare network, right? There are N number of, so the, the, the patient consent management, which deals with treating healthcare record as an asset. So if I'm a patient, Healthcare record is so. Today, if you were to move from, from let's say Massachusetts to Chicago, and you go meet a doctor there, and you have a new life, you have to redo all these tests unless you are willing to carry in some form or fashion your healthcare records. And that was again some of the core elements of what Obamacare was trying to solve back in the day. But that's a challenge. <clears throat> it's a challenge, right? I have really no control over my healthcare record. I I visit a doctor. I visit hospitals, they all have different healthcare information provider from Cerner to Epic to a few others, two being the largest. So the idea was, if I could have a healthcare ownership of the healthcare record, that solves a lot of problems because I have, and if I drive the consent driven management, so I own the record, it's my asset, and I can then do all kind of downstream function by sharing temporary the record, which is what the gentleman from Estonia talked about, is the notion of identity and assigning a record or digital asset to that identity and then eventually propagating the business function that goes from it. But there are hurdles. 
There are hurdles from the industry. There are hurdles from the governance systems. There are hurdles. So I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Paco, I believe we chose this healthcare because it is the least, it solved problem. It has a lot of business value in terms of moving money based on the healthcare providers and the ecosystem in between. But all th I think also it's, it was doable. It is something that we could do and address some of the core elements of healthcare industry problems as opposed to touching the most controversial area of the industry, which is EMR, EHR, and consent, which is giving the patients not just the right, but also expecting the patients to do the right things in terms of being educated and so on and so forth. So those are bigger pieces of things to solve, but I believe there's enough work and effort going in that area. I'm going to take a pause. Does it make sense to where we're going with this? Right. Yeah. Uh, then maybe let me add to that because that's, that's yeah. a very good point. That, and this probably uh, uh, transferred to other industries. That the, the opportunity to fundamentally change the core of the industry is huge. Yeah. It's hard. It's going to take time. But you can start um, try tackling real problems that have real value. And they start engage, engaging the community and the ecosystem, creating these networks of value around blockchain. And then people start sharing data, sharing business processes. And then you can get to the hardest part, hardest pieces, right? Yeah. And that's where, like, for example, I have 30 minutes. And for those of you who are technical in the room, you can understand explaining and going into the crux and the guts of how we did this from a blockchain perspective in 30 minutes is a Herculean task. So the idea was not to educate, but to inspire to the methodology that we've chosen across the industry is, so I've defined four steps. I've written this as a paper, so happy to invite you to connect with me on LinkedIn. We talk about a lot of these methodologies that we've used in the industries, including the tech elements, to say giving our clients an ability to give you a four-step process, and each step has a way, which gives you a simplified way to consume and digest a lot of a huge slew of technical stuff, because it could be a huge task to not just understand blockchain, but also applying blockchain to an industry is a, is a huge task. So the first step is find the right use case, right? So in many cases, unlike singular technologies, you could use a tech, you could use a specific tech like AI, or you could use a new emerging tech to imp improvise your existing processes. You could use the tech to make things better for a single industry. So in many cases for blockchain, the biggest challenge, which is what uh, Paco mentioned a few minutes back, is getting the minimum viable ecosystem getting the right sort of interested parties up front to incubate a network, hoping the network grows, giving that platform for additional services that we talked about. Again, let's start with payer pay network, and if the, if the network itself establishes itself, can I not then use that platform for EMR, EHR, and other sharing mechanisms with the right control points in place? So finding the enterprise impact, which means if this is use case that you can solve for your own enterprise, can you not solve the same use case for your cohorts? And this is the network effect that we talk about, right? So finding the use case, keep in mind that network or ecosystem is essential. Without that, blockchain doesn't really surface to be the right tech. Second thing is cost. At some point, beyond the initial romance or POC, someone's got to pay for the network. So you've got to garner funding. You have to have the longevity of a solution. So you have to ensure that this, this is an, a technical guy telling you this, that you have to ensure that the use case has enough legs it can stand on in terms of making that investment that's needed by the ecosystem. Step number two, create a business blueprint. And this is really, really critical where we do a lot of, again, early on 2014, we were eager in doing technical POCs and POCs always, proof of concept by the way, always work. It's a control experiment. You never heard of any proof of concept that failed, right? Everybody want, would like to you know, conclude a success with it. The idea is to take an existing business process, because remember, time and trust, and you're trying to flatten the business process that today is distributed across multiple parties in a, in a network. And in this case, you're trying to distill that business process into a blockchain network. And then you have to redefine, because in many cases, you're sharing data, you're sharing processes. There is a certain sense of visibility in the blockchain network. There's a certain sense of transparency in blockchain networks, which you can understand as a regulated industry, it's hard to fathom. It's hard to understand that. And this is where we spend a lot of time to do things like obfuscating data, ensuring the data movement is regulated, and all the industry elements that are, are, are addressed. Why do we do it? We have to discover inefficiencies. Again, it's a disintermediation platform. What that implies is that you have to ensure that we are trying to uncover some of the you know, disintermediation elements. We are trying to uncover interaction points and find dependencies as a, you know, as a part of step number two. So this is what we call as business modeling. You have to define the business blueprint before you begin to apply technology to it. 
Step number three is, again, this is where all the crux of blockchain elements come to play. We go in to define the right protocols, find the right con sub you know, smart contract logic, finding the right technology to obfuscate the data, which is ensuring that while we are sharing the data for sake of transparency, we're also preserving some of the information about the personal PII type, you know, type information. Again, uncover risk, total cost, understand the total impact. Step number four, the most expensive part of most blockchain networks is enterprise integration. And we learned this, again, after n number of experiments, is that once you formulate a network and you have participants on the network, eventually these systems would have to be integrated with the existing systems of the healthcare providers, the various ecosystem players, and that has to be taken into consideration as well. So these four steps will give you not just risk mitigation techniques, but also give you a, method, you know, a methodology so you're not just, you know, just jump right into a specific use case, but have an approach which has, helps you calculate cost, helps you with some of the elements in terms of uh, ensuring that you're making the right path, right approach towards the success beyond a proof of concept. Again, the four steps, there's a long paper written in this. In the interest of time, I'm gonna skip that. Seven lessons learned. Uh, I'm gonna stop at this in, a, in 23 seconds. Uh, the first four are primarily business-related elements. We do want to create a network. We do want to provide flexibility of participants who join the network. We also want to provide flexibility of the network design, which allows participants to leave the network. So the first four elements are all about flexibility in business networks. Uh, and the last five, six, and seven, again, uh, there's a whole paper and chapter written on this topic, which goes into technical elements. I, I do have to scale. We're dealing with, at least from the United States perspective, 300 plus million patients, their records, their data, and the fact that you have to maintain security, transactionality, and above all, coexisting with business models. Now, there's a lot of technology behind it. I'd like to understand that it's not uh, for the faint-hearted, in the sense that we do spend a lot of time in design. We do spend a lot of time in translating that design into applying the right tech. Um, so connect with me if you need more information on that. We just had 30 minutes to con communicate and convey what we've done so far. With that, um, last plug, uh, written two books on this topic. Uh, one was all about figuring out the business models. You need that uh, in terms of, so happy to share some of the knowledge that we've acquired over time. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank uh, Tori and her team for inviting us to speak at this event. And hopefully, these 30 minutes, which you can never get back in your life, was worth your time. <laughs> thank you so much. forced to new heights.